What's up everyone? We have a Honda here that we're going to be removing the engine. Now that's basically the purpose of this video. The reason why it's a little bit different is this one has a clutch. So if you have a clutch then this is going to be a removal. Uh, potentially a installation. I'm not quite sure if I record that one yet. I think I did. If I did I'll try to find it. Put a link in the description. If I didn't I'll record it later. But moving forward if this helps you out do have to mention and consider subscribing i post a couple times a week and hopefully if this is, helps you i can get your subscription and a thumbs up now that those things are taken care of what do we need to do well i've done a couple things already see the pull handle or pull cord excuse me i removed it from basically it's just free if you have any cables, uh, this one has a throttle cable and a, which also activates a choke. I have a dangling, so I don't want anything on there. In addition to that, I have disconnected the spark plug and I have everything pretty much ready. What you are going to want to do is we're going to have to tip it over on its side. I, depending on what you're going to need to do to the motor while you're taking the motor off, would recommend draining the oil. Worst case scenario, you give yourself an oil change. So while it's on its side, the oil can be draining. I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Next thing you'll see is the mower on its side with the blades out. Like I said, the plug is disconnected. I don't care if it's on off. Disconnect the plug. So. I'm going to be using an impact, rather large one, to remove the blades. You do not need this. Uh, the easier way is going to be to take like a piece of wood and a breaker bar or just a very large uh, ratchet <coughs> and take it off. You could do the normal sized one, but just get leverage. It's just easier. The bigger you can use the more leverage you have and this makes things a whole lot simpler so next thing we're going to want to do now these clutches are a little bit different every single time but they all have their own little special parts about them we're going to take off the center bolt i'm 99 sure it's a different size no it's not okay Now this is imperative. Pay attention to how this comes off. In fact, let us both get in there close and personal and we will look at it together. So first came the bolt and then came this whole assembly. Like I said, this isn't always the same. Whatever one you have, just Pay attention. Take it apart and put it down somewhere in order. Unless you've done this many of times and know it by like the back of your hand, go ahead and do that. Okay. Next. Hopefully this comes off easy. I don't think it's going to be so we're going to want to take off this spring to make it a little easier for us. Just going to take off the spring right here. Screwdriver. Pretty easy. Not that difficult whatsoever. There we go. That's better. Now, that's off. We're going to put it down in order, just like I said on the other piece. Your clutch is very likely to be different. This is a pretty interesting clutch to say the least. So at this point in time we really need to say to ourselves what are we going to be doing next? Well we need to take this key out. Oh okay that's easy enough. Sometimes these are really stuck in there taking that screwdriver and very gently, and I mean gently, tapping it, um, usually will dislodge it enough where you can take it out. 
Next, we're going to want to take this belt off. That's not going to be the easiest of tasks because it's in tension right now. And it's pretty much always going to be. So, we're going to get in the front of the machine. We're going to take our pull cord. There's too much crap in this garage. I need to move some stuff and get a little room. I'm just gonna see if it comes off. I tried pulling on it. It's not really wanting to, but maybe if I pull on the recoil now, it will kind of help it slide off. I doubt it. <laughs> now. No, we're gonna have to do this the right way. Or maybe. There we go. There we are. Very good. Nothing like a screwdriver. Now that is our prize. We're good to go now. So we don't really have to worry too much about the um, belt or even the cable. So this is the part that I would say, if you do not have a clutch, this is pretty much where you would be after removing the blade. You would still have a blade adapter, don't get me wrong, but you'd be pretty much here, so this part is pretty much universal. Since we're draining the oil, there's now an oil container underneath the engine. I'm going to tip it back over, put the uh, cap back on, put the container of oil away, and then we can get started with actually removing the engine. At this moment in time, I would not recommend using an impact if your machine is aged whatsoever if it's a few years old that's fine probably not going to be a problem but if it's aged you know five to ten years you're really running the risk of snapping the heads off these bolts depending on your mower sometimes there's three sometimes there's four whatever yours is locate all of them this one has one right here one right here one right here and one right here so I like to remove the ones that are the lowest or on the bottom first because it just makes it so it's a lot less tension. There we go. I tighten it a little bit just to kind of help break it free. And once it is free, pretty much good to go. Now we're going to do this one. This is actually pretty easy. If you don't know what a breaker bar is, basically it just has a very long handle. It gives you some really good leverage. It's very useful. If you don't have one, taking a, a wrench, a ratchet, putting a pipe on the end of it, it's a good alternative, except sometimes you run the risk of breaking the end off so get something that's a little higher quality now that we have everything cracked free and there's pretty much little to is no doubt in my mind i'm going to be snapping the heads off them i'm going to put the bit back on my impact and very slowly take the bolts out See that how corroded that is? That's why. This these aren't these aren't even bad. In fact, this is ten times better than I was expecting. Mainly due to the fact this deck has uh, 
uh, rust on it. Now before I move the final one, this one does have this bracket on it. So we're going to want to um, take that cable off the bracket. And I found an interesting little trick I want to show. Depending on the cable, if you take a long 3 8 inch socket and push it over, it actually puts in the little um, pieces that kind of hold it in place. Uh, that's not something you could do every single time. Uh, this is one of those rare times where you actually have room. But that is something that I found to be very, very useful. Now that we have that done, I think we have a 10 millimeter, two 10 millimeters holding that on. One was behind the cable, right here. And we're removing this primarily just to get it out of our way. I don't think it would impede us from removing the motor, but best to remove any and all obstacles. There we go. Now that's out of our way. We have one more mounting bolt that we need to remove. We're going to take our impact and I'm going to take my hand and find someplace secure I can hold on to the motor and then remove it. Whew. Is that still not out yet? It's not. It's weird. Sorry for the noise. And now we have one motor that is no longer attached to the deck. We can now do whatever we want to it. And now we have everything done. So that's how you remove it. Two things I want to go over. One, if you were to snap the heads off those bolts, it is important to actually drill it out. Basically what you're going to have to do is remove the bottom whatever type of motor you have honda this one's a little easier but you're going to remove the bottom piece and just take a drill or take a uh, punch punch a hole as center as you can drill it out tap it out look on youtube you'll be able to see removals all of, all day long you could use uh, welding and just kind of weld on it get a hot that sometimes will work and then undo it weld the a nut on top of it you know there's quite a bit of different ways to remove those broken heads but it is important to go ahead and remove those broken pieces why would you need to do this well if you need to do repairs for instance this one's getting pretty much rebuilt uh, if you are having very um, if you're having large problems with a deck like for instance that one has a hole in it you just want to remove the motor put it into a good deck there's a, another reason why or the opposite maybe the motor is bad and the deck is good you know use your imagination but if you are running into troubles don't forget this is always a possibility on how to remove the motor now one final bit i do have a video on a uh, tool that is homemade that I use for removing stubborn blade adapters. Uh, check that out if you're having a hard time re removing any type of blade adapter. A clutch, the best thing you could do is use a puller. I didn't have that problem, luckily. But if you do have that problem, just be careful when you do use your puller. You don't want to damage the clutch or the blade adapter for that matter. I'm Yambling, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you go. Have a good rest of your evening. Follow me on Instagram at smallengine101. I'll catch you on the next video. You have a good rest of your night.